Okay, as if it wasn't obvious by the title, you can see what this video is about. Now, for those who want the extended and somewhat loose, like some stool version, go see the video I did with Raccoon X, shout outs to him. But I digress. I'll be making comparisons between Rodan and Lucifer, or Rodan. Well, see, here's the thing. First and foremost, let me just say that anything I say and do is not intended to offend the religious peoples. That being said, if you're hyper-religious, how the fuck did you even find my channel, bruh? Seriously. Okay, let me take you guys back in time to Bayonetta 1. Now, a lot of us kind of sort of glanced over it because, well, Bayonetta documentary media is not necessarily congregated in an easy to find order if you live in North America. However, on top of that, we were all distracted by the fact that supposedly somebody in Bayonetta's crew killed Eggman in order to bring Rodan back from the dead, or I guess back from hell in this case. That was very, very fucking distracting. But, Here's something people still haven't learned. With the creation of Bayonetta 1 and Bayonetta 2, documentary books that contain DVDs, or I believe they were Blu-rays, gave us information about the construction of the characters and just the overall design and aesthetics and process that went into developing the game as well as the characters. They're called Bayonetta, the Eyes of the World, or Eyes of Bayonetta. But one of the things we learned is that it was openly stated that Rodan, at the time of Bayonetta 1 at least, was the most powerful character slash being in the series, However, that statement doesn't necessarily carry over to Bayonetta 2, but it is presumed that it is still the case in some way, shape, or form. Canonically speaking, it's never really clear if Bayonetta actually does get the Rodan weapons or the angelized weapons that you get for beating him in Bayonetta 1 or Bayonetta 2. But what is canonical is his abilities. He has the powers of a Lumen Sage, but he also practically has a fucking devil trigger. We don't know necessarily why, but Rodan has always been making weapons. Making weapons out of various things, whether it's halos or angelic energy or demonic souls and demonic energy. Most of the weapons in game he makes or he acquired. Some weapons don't even have a coherent story or logic behind how they came into existence or were given to the character that they were. Give you a brief example. Angel Slayer is a weapon exclusively to John, according to the actual data on it, it's a weapon that existed and was made, not by Rodan. It's also considered the sister blade to a blade that's meant to slay demons. Who the fuck made that? And what did they make it for? Well, I know what you're gonna say. Duh, they made it for killing angels, dummy. Yeah, I get that. They made it for killing angels. What I'm saying is, who else has the ability to soul smith? And I know that term doesn't come up a lot, but that's what I'm calling it, soul smithing. We don't know. We're not even sure when Rodan would have learned this technique. But see, let me tell you what I think. See, Rodan's been around on the earthly realm possibly hundreds of years, and he's immortal, or at least at a bare minimum, he's considered to be everlasting. The only thing we know about him is that he's considered to be a fallen angel. Who else is considered to be a fallen angel? Lucifer. And I'm not talking about that Prada-wearing bastard on Netflix. Oh, I should get a term. <laughs> Devil bunnies. Oh, no, Lucy fans. Lucifer at least from what biblical myth I'm aware of, because boy, has it been a long time since I read the Bible. However, I did recently read the Dead Sea Scrolls, which if you have any interest in anything relating to Bible myth, Bible lore, or just possible secrets, and I don't mean Da Vinci Code type stuff, I mean, this shit looked like it was genuinely hidden and removed and edited out, look into the history of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Let me just do a little bit of parables real quick. Lucifer wanted to rebel, and his father cast him out, AKA kicked him out of heaven, Supposedly, for the most part, threw him into hell, correct? Rodan is from Paradiso, as far as we know, and I, I stress that as far as we know. Rodan is from Paradiso, and he's barred from it. Think about it. He's a fallen angel, meaning he has angelic powers without the access to Paradiso, as far as we know. He didn't really even have access to hell, so basically, he was stuck in the equivalent of the immortal's purgatory or limbo, which is the earthly realm, the earthly plane. Well, here's the thing about that. How did he go from being there to being dead? Who had the power to kill Rodan? Who would have the power to kill Rodan other than the God? We know there's a God of Paradiso. We know there's a God of Inferno. Who's the God of Earth? We know there is royalty system, or at least there's an implied royalty system in the demonic realm. Here's what I think. One of two things. Rodan got cast out of heaven, much like Lucifer, if not themed after Lucifer, because he was told to do something he didn't want to do. Or he was doing something he was not supposed to do. That's what I think. Balder was made an outcast for what he did. Loving an Umbran witch. Rosa was permanently incarcerated for what she did. 
But of course, when there's a war, apparently they let her ass out or she just escaped. It's not really clear, but based on the fact that she's still bound and changed and her whole entire body is fully covered, including the bondage looking chains, I'm assuming they let her out because, hey, we need to help and aid and support for the war at that point in time. But let me ask you this. Did you notice that Balder didn't get the title of Fallen Angel? But Rodan did. I think, and I stress the term, I think Rodan tried to rebel either against figure more powerful than Balder because remember Balder was not the ruler necessarily of the entirety of the Lumen Sages or if he was his power was stripped and removed the minute they outcast him. The way I see it since Balder figured out that he could sacrifice and convert souls into angels by self-sacrifice aka suicide I'm of the firm belief that soul smithing exists in this world. And I don't mean just demonic transmutation. I mean literal soul smithing. The ability to take an ore or a soul and give something life or mold its physical form. We've seen this in Devil May Cry numerous times, although it's barely had any explanation in the games. And we've seen it with practically every single fucking weapon that Bayonetta gets, for lack of a better term. We don't know who makes those angelic hymns, but we know they are canonical. Hell, we don't even know why angels give off halos when they die. So follow me on a journey. Rodan rebels against whoever or whomever is in charge of Paradiso. But he realizes he can't kill them or hurt them. And they know he's immortal. They can't kill him, but they can hurt him. They bar him from his homeland. Basically, he's interdimensionally excommunicated. However, something else happens. And at some point in time, unbeknownst to Bayonetta, or soon afterwards of being murdered, Bayonetta help Rodan come back from hell. Let's think about this for a second. We don't know how long it took for Bayonetta to get Rodan from hell. He could have had his own little adventure DLC for all we know. We don't know the full extent of his powers. All we know is that in the start of Bayonetta 1, something was able to fucking kill Rodan, who for all intents and purposes should have been an immortal or at least an everlast. Now for those who aren't sure what an everlast or everlasting is, it's someone who will not die from natural causes, but they can be murdered. That means that there is something out there in this game that is more powerful than Rodan. They said Rodan was the strongest character in Bayonetta 1, but they tell us this right after we got a confirmation he died and is coming back from the dead. Doesn't that bother you guys a little bit? Make you think maybe there was some shit going on that we weren't told about? Makes me feel that way. And I think the reason Rodan is spending his days making these new weapons with or without Bayonetta because he, would make them, he was making them well before he met her is simply due to the fact that He's trying to engineer some form of super weapon that can let him get back into Paradiso and put up a good fight against whoever sent him down, possibly his own father, God. Now, I know there is a general consensus that the Umbrans have access to hell and demonic powers, or rather, they don't go to hell until they die, but they have access to demonic powers. And the Lumen Sages, although they are both earthly beings, are assumed to also have access to Paradiso and Paradiso-like powers. For all we know, Angels, or at least super angels, the ones that have humanoid forms, descend from heaven to teach the Lumen Sage things. Which leads into my second theory. What if Rodan, like Balder, did something he wasn't supposed to do and was just banned for it? Maybe he wasn't supposed to get directly intervene with humans. He taught the Lumen Sages how to make weapons or something like that. How to make summons or, or packs. Or he could have just got involved the norm, most traditional way. What if he fell in love with a mortal? And it was forbidden, which you think could be the possible best reason for Rodan, a basically interdimensional being capable of mass destruction single-handedly, as well as creating low caliber, high caliber weaponry, as well as possibly WMDs. Why do you think this motherfucker is just running a bar, just running a bar and also crafting weapons? Reminder, theory one. He's making these weapons because he wants to eventually create a weapon that can amplify his own powers enough to go and kill whoever kicked him out of Paradiso or whoever killed him in the first place. Option two, he got kicked out because he did something he wasn't supposed to. And all he wants to do is find a way back and he may need a special powerful weapon or accessory to get back there. Remember, Balder isn't just a sole weaponsmith. We don't know how he's making those bracelets, but... He make those good ass bracelets. Also, he wears them in most of the cutscenes you see him in, but a lot of people don't even realize it. Some of the actual bracelets and armlets and things that you get in game, he's wearing in cutscenes in both titles. So with that being said, I have noticed that this doesn't get talked about too much. So I'm curious if you guys got any questions or possible theories and headcanon as to who killed and what killed Rodan. Is Rodan a Lucifer allegory? And 
theories on why he's even making weapons in the first place. Remember, he doesn't just make weapons exclusively for Bayonetta. In fact, Bayonetta just takes whatever she gets from him. Rodan does the crafting, Bayonetta does the using of the weapons. And on top of that, we're not even sure if she gets to keep them. It's implied, for lack of a better term, that some of them or most of them are temporary or rentals with the exception of the four handguns she's using in both games. So the way I see it, weapons are meant to destroy and hurt, aka serve a purpose. And I just can't figure out for the life of me another reason for a nigh immortal super being with angelic and demonic powers to be making these weapons unless he's trying to kick someone's ass. Also, I'm curious, who the fuck do you guys think could have kicked his ass in the first damn place? All right, with that being said, this brings this video to a close and I will see you guys when I see you guys.